we'll be having a look at GraphQL Helix throughout this video. GraphQL Helix is a collection of useful utilities and functions for building GraphQL servers over HTTP. Helix comes with no opinions on how you serve the GraphQL server. So whether you're using Apollo, Express, Mercurius, or many others, this doesn't care. It gives you all of the tools you need without any bloat to build what you need. Here we have a endpoint serving a list of episodes, and these are fetched from the API. Right now, this is just a mock response with the episodes, IDs, and titles returned to us as JSON. And if you've used Next.js before, this setup will look familiar. We have a folder for our API, which is where our server will belong. And we have the pages directory containing the index and the individual pages by ID. And the server is built with GraphQL tools to create an executable schema. We have some type definitions, resolvers, and the schema. And we're just returning the mock data as JSON to the endpoint. Let's begin by installing GraphQL Helix from NPM inside of our next project. Then inside of our API source code, let's import a few utilities from GraphQL Helix. We can see here that there are dozens of help utilities from GraphQL Helix, and we'll import a few to help us create our GraphQL endpoint and process requests. We'll import get GraphQL parameters, process request, and send request from GraphQL Helix. Then when we export a asynchronous function for our API route, then let's create a new request object that contains the body, headers, method, and query from the request. We can then use the utility get GraphQL parameters from GraphQL Helix to destructure the operation name, query, and variables. We'll then use this when processing the request next. We'll then use the process request utility from GraphQL Helix to process request and return a result for our GraphQL query. This takes in a few things that we've already passed and created before for the request, operation name, the query, and variables, and any context if you have it. We'll then pass the executable schema we defined above with the type definitions and resolvers. We'll then use the send result utility to pass in the result which we defined using process request, and we'll pass in the raw response object, and this response will be what's given to us from the next JS API route. Now let's run npm run dev to start the next dev local server. Now before we check the results inside of the browser, we can see here that we have a query to fetch all episodes to get the ID and title. We use an Urkel and we'll export this on the default page and we're using the URL slash API. And this is the API route with Next.js that we created. We also have individual pages that fetch episodes by ID. And again, using Urkel, we pass in the URL to the API endpoint. So when we click on an episode, it takes us to a page and it fetches all of this data from that API route using GraphQL Helix to process a request and return the data in the GraphQL response. And you'll notice if we go to slash API, we're no longer sending the mock data, but we're now exposing the GraphQL Helix response. One thing you might be expecting when you visit the slash API endpoint is a graphical interface or GraphQL playground. Thankfully, GraphQL Helix exports a few functions that allow us to render a graphical interface and process the requests accordingly. So we'll use the should render graphical utility passing in the request. This is then able to run all of the boilerplate code to check to see whether this is a request that should show graphical or if we're posting a GraphQL query, it will run the operation as normal. All let's have to do is head on over to slash API and now we'll have the graphical interface rendered to us from the GraphQL Helix utility functions. This is a super fast way to resolve GraphQL requests inside of Next.js in an API route without any further middleware or packages.